Hey guys, right, so check it out. So I've had a few people ask me about match day nutrition and gaining weight, losing weight, maintaining weight throughout the season. So I thought I'd do a quick video just to kind of uh, cover some of the main things. Right, first things first, if you're considering kind of peak performance as such or match day nutrition, you're peeing in the wind unless you consider the day-to-day -day nutrition. I've written sports nutrition on the top. This is general goods practice, okay? And if you don't get this right, there's no point even looking at this because if you fuel yourself badly day-to-day, -day, then nothing is going to happen at the weekend that is of any particular note. So we are looking at creating energy across the week or fueling your body across the week for the ultimate performance of the weekend. And it starts with energy balance, okay? These things kind of go in a pyramid fashion, the most important at the bottom. Energy balance is key. Calories in, be calories out. If we don't get the fuel you need, it's not gonna happen. Some of you need to lose weight, okay? You are too heavy, okay? In terms of kind of getting to rucks and being useful on the pitch, you are wasting your time because you are carrying too much, okay? Others are too light and you need to gain some weight, okay? Some of you need to work hard over the next few weeks to maintain your weight. So getting the right calories in, in versus calories out is important. And for this, my preference is for you guys to get onto my fitness pal, start plugging accurately what you're doing day to day and seeing how many uh, calories you eat and how you can tweak that and improve that. There's no absolutes. I'm not going to say this is how much you should eat because unless we know what you're doing at the minute and make small adjustments, then nothing can happen. So firstly, we want to know your numbers. Once you put a couple of, you know, a week or two in accurately on my fitness power, as in weighing and measuring your food and understanding the quantities, then we can kind of tweak it and adjust and work out what your numbers are. If you are trying to lose weight, we we can work out how much you need to lose weight without affecting your performance. Then similarly, if you've got to gain weight, I can tell you exactly what you've got to do there. Next one's macros, proteins, fats, and carbs. Okay, probably most relevant to us as rugby players is protein. Okay, so research is clear, you need between 1.5 and 2.2 grams per kilo of body weight, okay? For you guys, I'd suggest you need that higher level because rugby is a vigorous sport, it's intense, okay? There's a lot of contact. So the Harlequins are on 2.5 grams per kilo of body weight, okay? I'd suggest you guys get closer to two in the first instance, okay? Um, that's quite a lot of proteins. So to do that, we need to make sure we're eating lots of kind of animal proteins, chicken, meat, you know, um, fish. Uh, also supplementation can come in handy here, okay? It can, it can support your efforts, but, okay, I'd s start with whole sources from the outset. Uh, fats and carbohydrates are slightly more flexible, in my opinion. I think most, you'd be crazy to be an athlete on a low carb diet, but again, it's personal preference. I think you could probably have about 50% of your diet as carbohydrate, or even more, if you're kind of trying to gain weight. So understanding that and um, managing that, probably 25 to 30% of your diet should come from fats. And again, it depends if you're trying to gain weight, lose weight, whatever, okay? it's. You know, making sure you're hitting a protein goal is, is probably the most important thing. Micros, okay, vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Fiber's the probably one I see most rugby guys kind of screw up. They're so committed to eating protein that they forget that the vegetables and things, you know, the fibrous things improve your digestion and absorption. If your digestion is poor, none of this matters, okay? You, everything's gonna shoot right through and, and you're not gonna get all the nutrition from it. So making sure you get adequate fiber, and that's 38 grams per day for most men, okay? And then, of course, you're, you're a grown-up, okay? I don't need to tell you to eat your vegetables, but most of you probably need to eat a little bit more to get your vitamins and some minerals in. Next one is meal frequency and timing, okay? Um, you know, there's current trend for fasting, but, you know, meal frequency is personal preference, I suppose. It's further to the top because it's probably less relevant. Some people prefer to eat three times a day, some four, some five, sometimes six, okay? Getting it, you know, it's, I think if, as an athlete, spreading your meals out across your day probably stands to reason, um, it probably drip feed nutrients in, but again, it's personal preference. I'm thinking more practically for guys who are coming from the office with demanding jobs or whatever, trying to be organized with your food. I say this is a kind of head nod to um, planning and prepping your food, being organized with your food so you've got a snack bar to eat on the train or so you can grab something healthy on the go or just taking your lunch with you is, is kind of relevant here. If you if you go for kind of large portions without it, you know, um, 
without food, you're probably not going to fuel yourself most appropriately. Also, I put caffeine and carbohydrates. I'll come on to that in a bit when I get over to Match Day Nutrition. And top of the tree is supplements. They're top for that reason. They're supplementary to a healthy diet. Um, you know, you can't, you can't make yourself healthy with supplements. But as a standard practice, and they're not performance enhancing supplements, they're good health supplements. And good health is kind of the foundation for everything here. A, a good multivitamin, some fish oils, uh, vitamin D and magnesium. Magnesium for me is great, it reduces cramps, helps your muscles relax, helps you induce a deeper night's sleep, so it's kind of good on that regard. Multivitamins like an insurance policy. Vitamin D can give you energy, or vitamin D deficiency can take away energy. And um, fish oils stands for reason, you know, uh, we want you guys to think better. Okay, so uh, creatine and protein in here, again, they kind of all merge in as one, but the gist of it is good day-to-day -day admin, this is kind of important for you. Down here I've written habits and routine because I suppose that's the difference between me as a personal trainer and me as a strength and conditioning coach. I realise there's got to be a practical element for you guys too. Um, I deal with individuals day to day to work out what works for them. Um, for you, you probably need to mull it over and think about it, okay? You've got everything to gain by getting this right. But key habits of good health, there's you know, five vegetables a day. I'm terrible at eating my vegetables, so I tend to have a smoothie first thing in the morning. I have spinach, apple and frozen berries. That means that I'm getting close to my five a day before I've even left my house. If you're bad at eating vegetables, this could be a good way of bumping up your fiber, again improving the absorption of proteins and all these different things too. Uh, protein at breakfast, lunch and dinner, again just good admin in my opinion. If you're going out of the house in a hurry or you're making a bad choice at the start of the day, you probably need to reconsider a few things. You need a palm sized portion of protein minimum before you, uh, you know, for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Bed by 10 o'clock. I mean, the whole gist of this is to create energy, and if you're tired because you're not sleeping enough, it is something you need to think about, okay? We are never gonna have a good um, performance on a Saturday if you've got a sleep debt throughout the week. Go to bed a little bit earlier, five times a week, and watch what happens, okay? Your body recovers better, it regenerates better, and you get more energy. Manage key stresses. It's in a similar vein to that. If you've got a demanding job, you've got to take time to kind of um, relax and recover from that. Um, you know, being on the go all the time is, you know, it's probably less pertinent to you, more, more relevant to kind of business owners and, and busy mums, but it's worth the head nod at this point because if you're constantly in that kind of fight and flight mode, you're not gonna be kind of rest and digest, your, your nervous system is gonna be kind of triggered over here, and we won't get the best of it here. You'll be fried by the time we get to Saturday. Drinking lots of water, three liters is probably kind of around about the right mark for most of you, but making sure you're hydrated because you know once we've got these vitamins and minerals around, we want them to find to the right, yeah, find themselves the right place in the body. If you are dehydrated or dried out like a prune, nothing's going to happen for you. And intelligent exercise, I suppose that's a, a, a conversation for a different day. But if you're bludgeoning yourself on some gash bodybuilder workout, you're probably not going to function very well at the weekend. Getting the right balance between kind of mobility, some core strength exercise compound movements, the right quantities with the right kind of combination uh, will mean you move better. And you, it's a recoverable volume. So volume, intensity and frequency is important with exercise. But again, that's a different story. If you get this right, roughly, if you get the approximate, like approximately this kind of stuff right, then we can start to look at match day stuff. Now, match day nutrition is an obvious science, right? Well, if it feels good, it's kind of probably going to do you right, okay, or if you think it's correct for you. So I've done Ironman triathlon based on me having a sausage, you know, sausage and mash the night before and waking up and having a bowl of cocoa pops in the morning. You know, uh, I fuel myself 14 hours a day on kind of sugary gels um, with that as my foundation. You know, um, they're foods that I felt comfortable eating, you know, there's no kind of new challenging meal there and um, you know, it had enough energy or enough calories in it to, to get me started, and it didn't have um, kind of fiber. We'll talk about that in a minute. So here's, here's how it might look, or here's something I found on rug, Rugby Strength Coach that kind of resonated with me, and it's probably something I've done repeatedly. Porridge uh, made with rice milk and a handful of berries and some honey and a couple of boiled eggs, okay, at eight o'clock in the morning. Again, we're kind of, on match day, we want most readily available um, um, macronutrient. Carbohydrates, easy. 
to to um to to get stuff from. So we're looking for porridge with some boiled eggs, maybe. Again, it's personal preference. Um, 11 a.m. Another small meal. We want a low fat and low fiber meal. Okay, we don't want your body using energy to digest food. So let you know less fiber at this point is preferable. Uh, a sandwich maybe a jack potato or some pasta. I quite like ch uh, chicken, pasta and pesto. I find that quite easy to eat and absorb. That's my preference. Uh, one o'clock, you want a high carb snack. Sometimes we're on the bus at this point. Sometimes you've got to just ride to the rugby club, whatever. Uh, cereal bars, we're looking for kind of convenience at this stage. So cereal bars could be a good choice. You could play around with a few or a shake with a presence of carbohydrate in. It's something like muscle fuel anabolic from USN. I quite like because, um, because it's kind of got a load of sugars in it and it goes down really well. Uh, tons of calories and they work quite nicely. Just before the game, I put it at 2.30, it could probably be about 10 to 2. We're looking for a carby drink and some sort of stimulus. Now, uh, the stimulant you use is up to you. I think most people overuse these stimulants and their effect weaken over time. And this is probably comes back to what we're doing over here with kind of nutrient timing. If you drink a lot of coffee day to day, it's gonna be like the effect is gonna diminish over time. So when I used to have a big race, I used to kind of cut down on the coffee on a Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So by the time I got on it on Saturday, I had a nice black coffee in the morning, uh, and then whatever stimulant I had before my race, I was ready to go. I was alert and I was sharp and I liked that feeling. So what you do here might be dependent on the timing you and, and what you do throughout the rest of the week. So play around with a few things, but you might find you have a better performance if you kind of whittle it down during the week, you know, maybe just Thursday and Friday off it and then get back on it, okay, on the Saturday. Uh, uh, and I suppose if we're talking about match day nutrition, and I'm probably sure you guys aren't thinking about this point, uh, but after the game is the start of our recovery. We used 45 players over the last couple of years. Uh, I reckon if we ate a bit better, did more intelligent exercise, we'd probably have less demand for, um, for players. You'd have less injuries, you'll recover better, you'll be healthier. And, and well. So uh, after the game, we want a carby drink with some protein in it. Again, muscle fuel anabolic is my like go-to. I quite like it, loads of carbs. Yeah, it, it's good. It's probably a good start point. Whatever Dave cooks and if we win, a beer as well. So there it is, day-to-day -day nutrition for you guys. Things to consider, match day nutrition is a cast off of this. You can't deal with that unless you deal with this. Uh, for my mind, you know, it can start with kind of things like my fitness pal. So, if you are interested, if you have ambitions to manage your weight better, if you want uh, kind of ideas to gain weight, come and give us a shout. Let's have a look at it and I'll go through some stuff.